Blessed is the King who cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace is in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with thy help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby thou hast given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory be to thee, O Lord. As they approached Jerusalem near Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go to the village ahead of you. As soon as you enter it, 
you will find a colt tied there that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here soon. So they went and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street and untied it. Some people standing there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They replied as Jesus had told them, and the bystanders let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks on it, and sat on it. Many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Both those who went ahead and those who followed kept shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. And after looking around at everything, he went out to Bethany with the twelve, since it was already late. The Gospel of the, re the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is the right good to do. It is right to praise thee, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which thou hast redeemed us through thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who liveth and reigneth in glory with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord, <laughs> Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With with thy spirit. Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who of thy tender love towards mankind hath sent thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to receive the word of God. Of the prophet Isaiah. The Sovereign Lord has given me the capacity to be his spokesman, so that I know how to help the weary. He wakes me up every morning. He makes me alert, so I can listen attentively, as disciples do. The Sovereign Lord has spoken to me clearly. I have been not rebelled. I have not turned back. I offered my back to those who attacked, my jaws to those who tore out my beard. I did not hide my face from insults and spitting. But the Sovereign Lord helps me, so I am not humiliated. For that reason, I am steadfastly resolved. 
I know I will not be put to shame. The one who vindicates me is close by, who dares to argue with me. Let us confront each other. Who is my accuser? Let him challenge me. Look, the Sovereign Lord helps me. Who dares to condemn me? Look, all of them will wear out their clothes. A moth will eat away at them. The Word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. We will read re re responsibly by whole verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. My I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am not I am For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But then for me, and I trust you, Lord. I have said, you are my My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies, and for those who persecute me. from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. You should have the same attitude toward one another that Christ Jesus had, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking on the form of a slave by looking like other men, and by sharing in human nature. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. As a result, God exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, and heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. For Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Early in the morning, after forming a plan, the chief priest, with the elders, and the experts in the law, and the whole Sanhedrin, tied Jesus up, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He replied, You say so. Then the chief priest began to accuse him repeatedly. So Pilate asked him again, Have you nothing to say? See how many charges they are bringing against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. During the feast, it was customary to release one prisoner to the people, whomever they requested. A man named Barabbas was imprisoned with rebels who had committed murder during an insurrection. 
Then a crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to release a prisoner for them, as was his custom. So Pilate asked them, Do you want me to release the king of the Jews for you? For he knew the chief priest had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas instead. So Pilate spoke to them again. Then what to do? Then what do you want me to do with the one who you call king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What has he done wrong? But they shouted more insistently, Crucify him. Because he wanted to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas for them. Then, after he had fought Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. So the soldiers led him into the palace, that is, the governor's residence, and pulled together the whole cohort. They put a purple cloak on him, and after braiding a crown of thorns, they put it on him. They began to salute him. Yeah. Again and again, they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Then they knelt down and paid homage to him. When they had finished mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. The soldiers forced a passerby to carry his cross, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country. He was the father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which is translated Place of the Skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes, throwing dice for them to decide what each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And then they crucified two outlaws with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by defamed him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you destroyed the temple and we built it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, even the chief priests together with the experts in the law, were mocking him among themselves. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the, the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, that we may see him believe him. Those who were crucified with him also spoke abusively to him. Now when it was noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Around three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Lahi, Lahi, Lema, Shabachtani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for a lot Then someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Leave him alone. 
But Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. And the temple curtain was torn in two, from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood in front of him saw how he died and said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and Joseph, and Solomon. When he was in Galilee, they had followed him and given him support. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were there too. Now when evening had already come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a highly regarded member of the council, who was himself looking forward to the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised that he was already dead. He called the centurion and asked him, if he had been dead for some time. When Pilate was informed by the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. After Joseph bought a linen cloth and took down the body, he wrapped it in the linen and placed it in a tomb cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone across the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was placed. Please be seated. Today begins Holy Week. It is, in a very real sense, the whole reason why we, the Church, exist. We exist in order to tell this story. We exist in order to tell the story of a God who is love, who is loved to such an extent that he came not only to live with us, but to die with us. And by his death to reconcile us to God the Father, to God the giver of life. It takes a whole church to tell this story. It takes a solid week to tell this story. Even if we abridge the texts, there's nothing light about this story. And there's nothing light about the way we tell it. There's nothing merely decorative or merely ornamental. There are no throwaway lines. There are no empty symbols. There are no extras in the cast. What is true of all of our faith and of all of our worship is this week most true. That what we do here is not the response to some capricious requirement laid down by a distant and uncaring God. Something that competes with real life for our time, our energy, or attention. If anything, this week, of all weeks, we should understand that if we try to separate our so-called real life 
from these realities that what we call real life very quickly devolves into the absurd. It becomes a stunted caricature of reality. Without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, what we call life is really just a slow death, sometimes under relatively pleasant forms of anesthesia. But there is no resurrection, there is no real life for us without the death of Jesus. We started today with the story of his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Crowds of men and women throwing palm branches, throwing their good, clean clothes onto a dusty, muddy, rocky, dung-strewn road because, hey, Jesus is coming. Jesus, the miracle worker, is coming. Jesus, the healer, is coming. Jesus, the exorcist, is coming. The one who raises the dead is coming, and maybe he will do that for us as well. Jesus, the one who provided bread and fish to multitudes, thousands, just as God gave manna and quail in the desert, he's coming, and he's coming for Passover. This is the time of year when the hospitality industry in Jerusalem is at its peak. The inns are full of pilgrims. The unleavened bread bakers are running their ovens 24-7. The sellers of lambs and goats are doing a brisk business, and even Hertz Lenda Donkey is packing them in. This is, after all, the one whose reputation proceeds him, the one who is at least a prophet and maybe even, as some say, the Messiah. And this has got to be good for us. It has got to be good for business. It has got to be good for our lives here in Jerusalem. And Jesus enters the city, as we heard in that first part of our service this morning when we blessed the palms, we heard about that triumphal entry. And between that episode and the one we began with in our reading with the Passion today, a lot happened. Jesus goes into the city, he looks around, and then he leaves and goes out to Bethany to be with Martha and Mary and Lazarus, his friends. But when he comes back to the city, the very next day, he finds those same people, the same people who were in that crowd, the same people who threw down their perfectly good clothing on a dumb-strewn road. He finds them back at their jobs, back at work, doing whatever was normal for them on that day. Some of them were dealing with their orchards, some of them were cultivating their fig trees. Some of them were selling lambs and goats in the temple courtyard. Some of them were changing money for the pilgrims who were going into the temple. And the first thing Jesus does when he enters the city after his triumphal entry is look at a fig tree that doesn't have figs on it because it isn't fig season. And he curses it and it dies. And the person in the crowd, whose fig tree that belonged to, to whom that fig tree belonged, no longer thinks Jesus is such a great guy after all. The people who were in that cloud, who, crowd who welcomed him, and who are now sitting at the money changers' tables in the temple courtyard, or who are now selling paschal lambs and goats, don't think he's such hot stuff anymore when he comes in and overturns their tables and takes a whip and drives their inventory out into the street and good luck getting it back. Jesus doesn't just disappoint people who had hoped he might be a political liberator or a military conqueror. He actually makes them angry. They are indignant because he is ruining their lives and their livelihood and spoiling a perfectly nice holiday for them and their families. 
And this is not, this is not the Jekyll and Hyde version of Jesus. This is the consistent Jesus. This is the Jesus who all along has said, I have come to set fire to the earth and how I wish it were burning now. I have come to prove the ruler of this world wrong about sin. This is the Jesus who will come in and finish the job he started with the healings and the raisings from the dead and the exorcisms and the cleansing of the lepers and the miracles of feeding and fish. This is the Jesus who comes into his own and who starts to behave like the king everybody just said he was. And he now reigns. And he now starts to act like a king. And he starts to pass judgment on what is wrong in Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem exists. The whole purpose of Jerusalem is to proclaim the reality of the God who has chosen Zion as his dwelling place. The whole job was to make the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob known to the world. And instead, people have used it to benefit themselves, to create cozy lives for themselves. The scribes, the experts in the law come to him and he denounces them for the loophole mongers that they are. The, authority, the temple authorities, the Sanhedrin, come to him and question him on his authority, and his response to them is to tell the parable of the wicked tenants who didn't deliver what they were supposed to deliver. Jesus comes into the city and shows who he truly is completes the picture of who he truly is. And all of a sudden, it's not quite so attractive anymore. And why? Why would he do that? Why would he ruin his own reputation? Why would he turn all of these people against him? And the answer is, of course, that he doesn't. He is doing what his father has sent him to do, to return the world to him, to restore the world's proper priorities, to restore the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the inhabitants of Kinderhook and the members of this church to their duty, to their responsibility, to what they were called and made into Christians to do, which is to proclaim the glory of God who gives life, who alone gives life. The God who alone can really determine and proclaim what life looks like and who has revealed that to us and has ensured that it has been recorded for us and passed down from generation to generation. The people of Jerusalem don't like Jesus coming in to be the judge he actually is. Our world today is preparing to reject him in precisely the same way, by rejecting any notions of judgment, by rejecting the idea that there's any such thing as objective right and wrong, by rejecting the idea that anything other than who I feel I truly am inside determines who God has created me to be. But this is what Jesus has come to do, to restore life, to put life back on track, so that when the new Jerusalem comes, we can live in it and know it to be home. Jesus came into this world through a narrow passageway. He came into this world through the, the narrow passageway of the birth canal. He enters Jerusalem through a narrow gate, and he will leave the tomb through a narrow opening cut in a rock. But that's all one, one piece 
The coming and the going and the passageway are all one, and they may be narrow, but they are reliable and they are sure and they are true, and they are as real as it gets. And they show all of our other fantasies about reality to be the fantasies that they are. Jesus goes from death to life and wants us to follow him through the narrow passageway from death to life and offers us the opportunity and endows us with the ability by the Holy Spirit to let go of all the things we thought were real and to follow him through that narrow passageway out into a life so expansive it will never end. That's the story we tell this week. It starts with something narrow and uncomfortably tight and close. Something uncomfortably specific. Something distastefully precise. But it opens us up into a life that is unimaginable unless we follow him. Brothers and sisters, this is our great privilege this week. This is our great responsibility. This is our great blessing, not just to hear this story, but to learn it and to join in telling it. I invite you to give servants of a blessed, if somewhat abridged, but nevertheless a blessed and holy and life-giving Holy Week. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we begin to tell this story, let us rise and stand and recall the core of our belief and our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God is the Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, my life of life, very God of very God, begotten of my day, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was the heart of God who looks of the Virgin Mary, and the Lady of the and as we so die also so far as one who not just follow, he seems suffered and is buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and he ascended to heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Observance of Holy Week 
in every parish, and in every home. We pray to Thee, O Lord, for commitment to the spread of Thy kingdom. We pray to Thee, O Lord, for the ministry of healing in every parish. We pray to Thee, O Lord, for the world, our nation, our state, and for all governmental and political leaders, we pray to Thee, O Lord, Lord for the chronically ill and those infected with the coronavirus, for health professionals, caregivers, and researchers, we pray to Thee, O Lord, Lord for Lynn, Pat, Jim, Nancy, Joyce, Rose, Casey, Margie, Stasia, the Maginoli family, Brian, Hank, Brandon, Tricia, John, Paul, Kyle, and Jay. We pray to thee, O Lord. For those ex exposed to perils for our sake, we pray to Thee, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For all the faithful departed, especially the clergy, lay leaders, and lay ministers of this diocese, we pray to Thee, O Lord. Lord have mercy. In union with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Paul, Saint Benedict, Blessed Daniel Nash, Blessed John Keeble, Blessed John Doan, Blessed Frederick Denison Maurice, Blessed James Lloyd Breck, Saint Richard, and all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank Thee for this, Thy Diocese of Albany. Inspire and sustain us in this time of transition. Incline our hearts to do Thy will, and so direct us in Thy ways, that the leader Thou art raising up to be our bishop shall find here joyful disciples making disciples, united in faith, unflagging in hope, and steeped in mutual charity. In Thy mercy, accept our repentance and grant us peace. Look with patience on our enthusiasms. Pour rich gifts and grace upon all who are entrusted with the ongoing work of thy church, so that with diligence and charity we may discern correctly and walk righteously in thy ways. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation. We do earnestly repent, and our heart is sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of that is grievous unto us. The burden of them is horrible. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee. Father, 
Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, ruler of the universe. To thy goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth hath given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, ruler of the universe. To thy goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And with the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is, it is meet, right, 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 right. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should in all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself who by his suffering and death became the author of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed be the For that thou, of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself, once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, 
a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. As oft as do this, as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins, and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and make one body with him that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our, offense, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, the world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us all our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we are not to take nation, but deliver us from evil. For I am in the kingdom of God, and I will bear the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. We do not presume to come to the sight of the Lord. Trust in our own but in the name of the Lord, we are not worthy of so much as the shadow of our own the table. But thou art the same Lord, and our heart is the Lord, and our heart is the Lord. And as is therefore gracious to the Lord, so we do flesh the rights of the Son of Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may have more of all in him, and in him.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given to be preserved by body and soul to everlasting life. Amen. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given to be preserved by body and soul to everlasting life. Amen. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou hast feed us in those and ministries with the spirit for food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son and our Savior Jesus Christ. And to us who share our life with thy favor and goodness to us. And may we are very the blessed blessings company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we are to see the only of our Father, so as to accept us by thy grace, that we may continue to have that form of fellowship, and do all that such great works thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we need the Holy Spirit, Please be seated. Anyway, good morning. Thank you for coming. Uh, this, this is a nice turnout to have on.
call the Sunday. Um, there will be two uh, in-person uh, services coming up. Uh, Monday, Thursday, we will have the Eucharist here, um, and we'll have the Eucharist, and we'll do a, a sort of uh, uh, abbreviated stripping of the altar, because there's not much to strip here. Uh, but we will reserve the Blessed Sacrament. We will not have um, open door adoration uh, that evening. We'll just we're going to put the put the uh, uh, the newly consecrated Eucharist in uh, on the altar of repose. But then we will uh, just leave that there until we we regather again um, and use some of that perhaps on on Sunday. So that will be an in-person service on Friday night. I'll do some online devotions uh, for Good Friday. And on um, Holy Saturday, uh, on the, at the beginning of Easter, at sundown on Holy Saturday, um, we'll do a, an abbreviated Easter vigil. We won't do the whole Mass, but we will do the blessing of the new fire, uh, the blessing of a new and beautiful, beautiful Paschal candle that Father Randy um, Lucas has made for us. Uh, Father Randy down at uh, St. Mark's in Philmont has made for us. So we will be blessing that new Paschal candle and uh, we'll sing the Exaltet, we'll hear the story of salvation, and that will be our Easter Vigil service. And then we'll reconvene for Easter. The continuation of Easter will be on Sunday morning, uh, and we will do that at two services, 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. And I would like to encourage the regular 8 o'clockers to come at 8, if you would, please, um, because we don't know who's going to turn out, who's going to come out of the woodwork for Easter. Uh, and I don't want to have a situation where everybody shows up at 10 because... Um, we may not have enough seats, and I don't want to turn people away. So if you can come at 8, that would be wonderful. Uh, of course, whatever whatever um, arrangements you have, you know, follow those. But uh, it would be nice to be able to split that up to make room for anybody that might just show up. Or family, if you have someone visiting from out of town. Uh, there will also be a, a Saturday morning brief, a Saturday morning devotion. There is a, a, a service for that that's rarely used, but we have an opportunity to do it this year. We're taking it a little bit easy this week on, in Holy Week because I get my, my second shot tonight and I don't know how it's gonna affect me or how long. So um, please pray for me and for Mother Judith as we as we figure out what this is going to do to our Holy Week. Uh, but with that, I wanna thank uh, just in advance everybody that worked so hard to make these services so beautiful. I wanna thank Kathy for the music. I wanna thank Joan and, and Dawn for for the altar guild work, and I know there are people in the background there too, and, and Rick um, and Dick that uh, that help out with the uh, with making the space so beautiful. I want to thank uh, Dan for ushering and uh, and Dave for your hard work on the videos. You've really your artistry in that has been greatly appreciated, and to all of you for for all that you do and for your support here at St. Paul's. So as we go forth this week, let's. Recall that we are beginning uh, the most solemn week of the Christian year. That this is the, this is the story that we were born, created, made, and commissioned to tell. Uh, keep that in mind. Revisit it often during the week. Spend time reflecting on the scriptures. Spend time in prayer. Uh, and, and count it your great privilege and your great blessing to be asked to be one of those who tell the story. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Amen. 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 Amen.